Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to the Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned without word and deed. that for the next three nights to remember to say your evening prayers of our Father, Hail Mary and Glory Be, and to also reflect upon the readings that are found in today's bulletin. Also, I ask that you do three good deeds this week to someone in your family, to one of your friends, or to one of your neighbors, or to one of our parishioners. And now, if you are truly sorry for offending God, I ask that you consider this penance, and I will continue to say, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. And Show us your mercy, Lord. salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, take away our sins from us, O Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear my voice, Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. Come, says my heart. Seek God's face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Alleluia. Do not hide your face from me. Do not rebel your servant in my You are my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, for O God, and Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory, 
to whom God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you promised that when we seek you with all our heart, we will find you. Give us such a total desire for you that we will not cease our search until you show us your salvation and reveal your presence. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Cheryl, will you please proclaim the word? The first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Pheraminus, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Alleluia. The Lord look upon you kindly and gives you peace. Alleluia. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Peter the Apostle. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. 
Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah, with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips. Through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. For from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for such a long time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel, according to John, as part of the teachings of our Lord and Savior at his Last Supper. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Last weekend, I was not with you, as you all know. I had the opportunity of attending the 22nd Mission 
National Mission and Evangelism Workshop in Reading, Pennsylvania. A long trip, a little over five hours each way, but it was well worth it. The theme for this year's workshop was Ambassadors for Christ. For three days, our Prime Bishop, Anthony McCuskey, and all the bishops of the church, along with many priests, were gathered with over 40 lay participants, known as, in the early church, followers of the way. For three days, we spent time as a Christian community in prayer and in instruction, just as we have read in the Acts of the Apostles written by Luke, who was a disciple of the Lord. Today, just as the early apostles gathered in an upper room to share the Passover, we too, as the disciples of the Lord, gather in this upper room and share in the consecrated bread and wine which becomes, in these holy mysteries, the real presence of Christ through the Eucharist. And just as the apostles heard the words of the, our Lord, we too, as his disciples, hear his word as found in the good news, the gospel. Jesus also told us that wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. I will be among them. And so in the sanctity of this upper room, our Lord is present in our faith. And he speaks to us both collectively as the body of Christ, but also individually in our hearts and minds. Pause for a moment and accept his promise that he is among us this day. So what does the Lord say to us this day? We read in today's Gospel and throughout the season of Easter that when the Lord came on to those who would witness the power of his resurrection, his first was a greeting and is a greeting. And he says to all of us this day, peace be with you. The second is a directive. As my Father has sent me, so I send you. And the third thing that Jesus said to those for whom witnessed his resurrection, the apostles in that upper room. It came in the form of a blessing. Receive the Holy Spirit. Now the first time that we receive the Holy Spirit is at our baptism. Where the celebrant breathes upon the infant, or sometimes an adult, to be baptized in the living waters as a directive of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the words that are spoken as the celebrant breathes upon the child or adult three times receive the Holy Spirit.
You know, as I said this past weekend, last weekend, the theme was Ambassadors for Christ. And I say to you today, the hearers of the word, if we do not bring peace, his directive to go out into the world, and his blessing of receiving the Holy Spirit, then we are not fulfilling what he calls upon each of us to do. We learn from Peter that we are ambassadors of Christ. Did not Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew give another directive? Go out into the world, preach the good news, make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and the, the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The introductory rite that before you are baptized in the living waters, you are called upon to renounce your old self. Our godparents do this for us. And when we receive the sacrament of confirmation, where the bishop prays over the one to be confirmed, to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we are called upon to go out into the world, be filled with the Spirit of God, and to bring others peace and blessing. You know, a couple of months ago, I had the opportunity to offer not one but two PowerPoint presentations based upon this year's 12 statements of the Confession of Faith of our first Prime Bishop, Francis Holder. His plaque is in the back of the church. His picture is over the doorway. And the two PowerPoint presentations I gave those evenings were about Christ our Lord. The first statement was very straightforward. And Bishop Holder said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior and the spiritual regenerator of the world. His third statement also speaks of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he wrote in this third statement, I believe that Christ the Lord was the emissary of God of one substance with him, and as to humanity born of the humble woman Mary. I believe that this Nazarene master revealed his divine mission on earth throughout his life, an unsurpassed ideal of goodness, wisdom, and self-sacrifice for others, especially for sinful and disinherited people. That by his work, teaching, and sacrificial death, he became the glowing ember of a new life of mankind, taking its beginning and deriving its strength and fullness in knowing God, loving him, and fulfilling his holy will. You know, while I was, my dear brothers and sisters, in Reading, Pennsylvania, I went a couple of days early before the actual workshop. A lover of history, I was able to spend a day on Wednesday to go to Valley Forge. Thursday, I had the opportunity to go to the Sight and Sound Theater in Lancaster County, where I saw the production of Moses. And I'm glad that I had the chance to see that production. Because Moses, the lawgiver of the Old Testament, was also sent by God 
to give freedom to the Hebrews, to the Israelites from the power of the Pharaoh. Moses said, who am I? I don't know how many of you know that Moses had a problem speaking. He stuttered. And he said, God, who am I that you're going to send me? Send my brother Aaron, who is more knowledgeable and does not have a speech impediment. Whether it was in the Old Testament, and most importantly, in the New Testament, we see that God sends people to fulfill the mission. Did not God send the prophets to fulfill his mission? And so are we not as disciples of the Lord called upon this day to strive to live by the teachings of Jesus Christ and to be an example at all times to go out into the world to preach the good news it was our blessed Lord says by this all men shall know you are my disciples if you have love for one another if we look at the entire ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it was a ministry of love and so on this fifth Sunday of Easter may we strive to emulate the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for it was our Lord when asked by Philip, show us the Father, and I'll be enough for us. What did Jesus say? Philip, have I been with you all this time, and you do not know me? For I say, whosoever has seen me has seen the Father. That truth existed 2,000 years ago, and that truth exists to us today. And so he calls each of us by name. And he says, have I been with you, but yet you do not know me. We may not see our blessed Lord in a physical way, but we know him within our hearts and through his teachings. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I'll be he leaving, walk on God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary.
For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, and shone in our hearts to bring the light of knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son and the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son and the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace and defense and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, in our prayers, let us remember the sick, the suffering and the dying, the hungry and the homeless, those who are unemployed, May we pray for the health and safety of all those who are suffering illnesses. And give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors and nurses, first responders and healthcare workers. In our most humble and sincere prayers, may we remember and pray for all abused and neglected children in our world for all victims of violence, both here and abroad, for the victims of the recent mass shootings, and pray for not only their souls, but for the souls of those who have, they have left behind. May we pray for peace for the people in Ukraine and other parts around our world. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad. Are there any intentions today that you would like to offer? Then let our intentions be within our hearts as we gather in the body of Christ and pray for one another. And Lord, remember all here who are present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who, who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ the day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his heavenly Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, 
which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty, from your own gifts and presence, a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. <clears throat> Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember our brothers and sisters who have gone before us with a sign of faith and now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things through him with him in him all honor and glory are yours almighty father in the unity with the holy spirit forever and ever Instructed by our Savior's teaching uh, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints. Grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord I am not worthy really to receive you. Only say the word, and I shall be.
Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for the ages, the cornerstone of our salvation, now revealed in this Holy Eucharist we have shared. Through your holy resurrection, build us into a living temple to contain the glory of, of God. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. has been offered. Alleluia. Alleluia. Ah, ah, alleluia. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Praise you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence. And the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being. And apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found a life. Life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thank you. 